intertextuality. What does this word all about? Stick around. Hi, dear learners from all over the world. This is Renette. Welcome back to our reading and writing class. Today, I encourage you to read different types of reading materials as so our new lesson is connected on how a text is related to the other text. But first, let's review our lesson. What was it? It is about hypertextuality. We studied that hypertextuality or hypertext is a series of chunks connected by links that offer readers different pathways. It is non-linear or multilinear, non-sequential, nodal, and allows for the reader's navigation control. Please click the link above if you haven't yet watched that video. Let's begin our lesson with the following objectives. At the end of the lesson, you are expected to define the meaning of intertextuality, identify the types of intertextuality, and apply intertext strategies in reading resources for an output. You try to look at these pictures and video clips. Who are movie lovers here? You might say that mm, that movie is related to another movie. Even the most iconic or popular original films have borrowed heavily from other source material. Other fashion designers say, oh, I got this idea from a famous designer and just made my own twist. For singers, the moment they sing a popular song, they also have their own version, their own style. This is due in part of what is called intertextuality. During the Miss Universe Philippines Q&A, when Miss Rabia answered, she was the best president he never had, a lot of people reacted. They said, hmm, I think I read that line from the book, or somebody already made that statement. Well, it is not our concern to trace whether or not she borrowed that statement. Personally, I don't mind because there's nothing wrong with borrowing words or statements. It is difficult to identify intertextuality if you don't have a wide knowledge of different texts. That's why it is important that you should always read. Not just one genre could be books, poems, films, plays. Remember, reading an academic book is different from reading a fiction novel. Okay? Our ideas, our perceptions are most of the time based from the sources we have read. So, what is intertextuality? From the dictionary, inter means used to form words meaning between or among groups of people, things, of places. The text, the written words in a book or a magazine, in other words, Intertextuality is the shaping of a text, meaning by another text. It is derived from the Latin intertext, meaning to intermingle while weaving. Intertextuality is a term first introduced by French semiotician Julia Kristeva in the late 60s in essays such as word, dialogue, and novel. Kristeva broke with traditional notions of the author's influences and the text's sources, positing that all signifying systems from table settings to poems are constituted by the manner in which they transform earlier signifying systems. To simplify, a literary work then is not a product of a single author, but of its relationship to other texts to the structures of language itself. Any text is constructed of a mosaic of quotations, and any text is the absorption and transformation of another. The text itself will have meaning if it is written under some context, and this includes the physical and the cultural conditions, and is related to other texts. That's why we sometimes wonder, for example, in the field of music, you may ask, who is the original singer of this song? With so many versions and revisions from different singers, we could no longer trace the original version. 
intertextuality can also happen in all forms of art, literature, and music. An example of intertextuality is an author's borrowing and transformation of a prior text or to a reader's referencing of one text in reading another. There are many different types of intertextuality. All of them refer to texts in different ways to produce and shape meaning. The first type is allusion. It is an expression that calls attention to something without explicitly mentioning it. It often called passing reference. It is actually a figure of speech that references place, thing, or event. For example, when you say to your boyfriend, Thank you, my Hercules. Oh, thank you, Romeo. His name is not Romeo, by the way, but you call him Romeo because you associate Romeo from the Romeo and Juliet story. You say, oh my gosh, here comes my girlfriend, my Helen of Troy. But you will never appreciate these expressions or you can't relate to this if you don't know the stories. You may say, my greatest Waterloo is when I failed the exam. I like allusion actually. Well, there are four types of allusion. They are historical, biblical, literary, cultural. When you want to allude the stories or characters from the history, such as Waterloo, Napoleon Bonaparte was defeated in Waterloo actually. That's historical. You are my Romeo. That's literary. Michelangelo's well-known statue like David depicts the biblical hero King David. All right, these are examples of allusion. The second is the parody. When one piece of writing uses many of the same elements of another, but does it in a new and funny way, this is an example of parody. The parody may copy the setting, plot, characters, or other parts of the original work. It is mimicking to comment. There are people who love to mimic President Duterte, President Trump, and other famous people. Remember, it is imitating or mimicking with humor and commenting. To simplify, it is somewhat like a spoof. Watch this example of movie parodies. We even have music video parodies. I think they are not really mimicking the songs, but more of the groups parodying the looks of other singers. Check that video. The third type of intertextuality is pastiche. A pastiche borrows elements from one or more works and reconfigures them to create something new or even incorporating the elements of a novel or writing style. This is reworking of an original work but not humorous as parody. It is generally a respectful type of borrowing that gives credit to the original and is not plagiarism. Before modernism, it was not acceptable or it is considered as plagiarism but in today's situation, it is somehow acceptable. Example is Cassandra is retelling of the fall of Troy but from a woman's point of view, you mimic. Some authors say you are just mimicking to mimic. You are not commenting. It's the opposite of the parody. One author, his name is Frank Angelo from this link, cited other types of intertextuality and they are adaptation. When you say adaptation, he mentioned that it's recasting into a new form. The second is retro, means recycling. It is the most pervasive strategy of refashioning old rhetorical forms and adapting to new uses. I have noticed some parties are in retro theme. The third is the appropriation. This is the act of borrowing or stealing over others' meaning to one's own end. This is very common in modern and postmodern art and photography. And he cited parody and pastiche too. Well, some authors may have different terms as to how they identify the types of intertextuality. But given the context, I hope you have understood the deeper meaning of intertextuality. So I have here some examples of intertextuality. How can you appreciate intertextuality? I will give you three strategies. The first is associating. You should associate the text, some past text, 
is linked to a present text. You have to make associations to your existing knowledge and make mental pictures or maps of a topic and make connections to prior knowledge and experiences. Next is integrating means the background knowledge is applied to a present text. And the third is evaluating. These consist your personal judgments, your values, your conclusions, and generalization in comparing past and present texts. Well, when you know the importance of intertextuality, it will increase your awareness of how it is used in real life. When you read a text, you also have to consider the interrelated context in which it is written in order to get wider look toward a text. You need it to relate it with other texts, okay? Recently, I have attended a webinar on focus, memory, and how to remember names. Our speaker is from India and he mentioned the value of association and visualization. You can visit his YouTube. His webinar is helpful for students. So if you want to remember the names you have, or you want to remember the things you have studied, then you should attend to his webinar. Very powerful. When you hear, watch, or read a familiar story, try to associate it. What are some similarities that you can associate about it? Then learn to integrate it. Means what's the value of this story in the present time, okay? And you will be able to reflect. Remember, in every learning you take, try to ask yourself, why do I need to learn this? What is my takeaway? Why is this topic included in my subject? If you make this as a habit of valuing your lesson, you will discover that learning is a mosaic of ideas and they are all intertwined. Now, I hope that every time you read a novel, watch a film, or listen to a song, try to analyze whether or not it is being intertextualized. Should you have any questions and clarifications, please feel free to write them in the comment section below. Happy learning everyone! See you!